What's up YouTube, it's your boy Rhett, back at it again with another video. Back in late March, I thought about making a video talking about how the cryptocurrency Luna was backing their UST stablecoin using Bitcoin. I thought that might be a good topic based on this really compelling article that I read on the subject that I'll leave a link to down in the description. I ended up not making the video because I thought the topic might be a little bit too complex and that it wouldn't really do very well on YouTube search, which in hindsight was a really stupid reason not to make a video about a topic that turned out to be very important. Basically, I up my bad. Obviously, if you're watching this video, you probably are aware that last week UST lost its peg. And at the time of the recording of this video, UST is still trading around 18 cents. At the same time, Luna has increased its circulating supply by almost a million times what it was before, which is just a crazy thing to say out loud. And it sounds almost not believable. And obviously, if you're increasing the supply of a token that much at the same time that the demand for that token is collapsing, that's a perfect recipe to take the price of the token to zero or very, very, very close to zero in the case of Luna. People on Twitter were saying it was a great buy at a dollar and it was a great buy at six cents. But at the time of this recording, Luna is currently trading around 0.02 cents or two one hundredths of a cent. A lot of people have reached out to me over this last week asking me to explain in simple terms this whole situation and how all of this happens. So if you guys watch until the end of the video, we're going to be covering what is Luna, what is UST, and what is the anchor protocol. We're going to be talking about how Bitcoin was involved in this situation. I'll cover how the collapse happened. And then finally, I'll talk about what I think is going to happen going forward and what the fallout of this event is going to be. Some of the logic and the economics in this video are going to be very confusing. And so if you do want to learn more about anything that we're talking about today, please go down in the description and read the original article by Damson Dow that I read back in late March that sort of turned me on to this topic in the first place. Go down below and smash the like button for Ponzi-nomics and let's level up your brains. <laughs> Okay, so first of all, what is the cryptocurrency Luna? Luna is the governance token of the Terra blockchain. And the Terra blockchain is a public blockchain that was created by the private company Terraform Labs. The Terra blockchain is a layer one blockchain similar to Ethereum, Cardano, Polkadot, and the Binance Smart Chain. It basically exists so that other people can build apps on top of it and that it can create this financial ecosystem that brings utility to the users of the Terra platform. The two biggest applications in the Luna ecosystem were the UST stablecoin and the lending protocol called Anchor. Now that we have a very basic understanding of what Luna is, next let's talk about what is UST. UST is an algorithmic stablecoin that was built for the Luna ecosystem. What the does that mean? Let's go ahead and break that down one word at a time. A stablecoin is a cryptocurrency that is pegged to the stable value of some asset in the real world, in this case, the US dollar. So theoretically, UST should always be worth about a dollar. In reality, most of the time that UST was trading, it was trading between 99.99999 cents and 1.000001 dollars. Algorithmic means that this one dollar value that keeps the price stable was coming from a computer algorithm that the creators of UST we're using to incentivize people to continue to trade the UST stablecoin between 99 cents and 1.000001 dollars. You can contrast this to stablecoins like Tether, USDC, and GUSD that are theoretically backed by cash and cash equivalents, and that is what is giving those stablecoins their value of one dollar. UST is not backed by these cash reserves. It's backed by this algorithm that is theoretically pegging the value of UST to one dollar of the Luna token. The idea is is that $1 of UST equals $1 of Luna. So if you have a dollar of Luna, you can lock that up within the Luna protocol and receive $1 of UST stablecoin. If the value of UST gets too high above $1, the protocol would incentivize Luna holders to lock up more Luna to create more UST, increasing the supply of UST and theoretically lowering the price of UST down to a dollar. And then the same thing, if the value got too low, they would try to destroy some UST by incentivizing advising Luna holders to cash out their UST back into Luna, decreasing the supply of UST and driving the price of UST back to a dollar. And so this algorithm is running all the time and moving the price between 99 cents and 1.000001 dollars. And that's where this like minutia is coming from. It's all coming from this algorithm that they've written. In practice, it doesn't always work this way, obviously, but we'll talk about that more later on. Next, let's talk about why you would ever want to lock up your Luna for UST in the first place. This question is is going to bring us to what is Anchor. Anchor is ironically dubbed a savings protocol that allowed users in the Luna ecosystem to earn 20% APY on their UST stable coins. Over in DeFi land, a 20% APY is a very conservative amount of yield to be earning. I've made fun of protocols in this 
this channel that are offering you like 10,000% APY, which I think should just go to show you how unsustainable and levered up the entire DeFi ecosystem is. We're not going to talk about that more in this video because that's its whole own separate topic that I could rant on for quite a while. If you do want to see a video like that, go down below and leave a comment because I think the leveraged nature of Terra is really just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to DeFi as a whole. This 20% yield from Anchor was coming in part from funding from Terra Labs, incentivizing people to lock up their USD in the Anchor protocol by rewarding early adopters with the Anchor protocol token. The rest of the Anchor yield sounded like it was coming from lending activities, which like we've covered on this channel many times before, lending activities activities are a form of leverage and do carry blow up risk. Anchor was a huge part of the Luna ecosystem and made up about 80% of the total value locked in the Luna protocol. At this point, maybe you're starting to see the problem. We have a coin Luna whose value is created by the applications that are built on top of it. People lock up $1 of Luna to receive $1 of UST stablecoin that is then lent out for 20% interest within the Anchor protocol. And that yield that is being earned in the Anchor protocol is being subsidized by the same private company that owns Luna. Just don't think about it too hard and it'll make sense. So what does any of this have to do with Bitcoin? Back in March, Terra Labs started aggressively purchasing Bitcoin to back the value of UST with Bitcoin reserves. The idea here is that in a leverage unwind scenario where people are mass selling their UST back into Luna and then maybe exiting the entire Luna ecosystem completely, Terra Labs could liquidate their Bitcoin reserves to keep the UST peg at a dollar, which wouldn't stop the leverage unwind scenario as we'll see later, but but it would theoretically slow it down because you'd have this massive reserve of Bitcoin that you could just flood onto the market, get the cash, and then repeg UST at a dollar. Do Kwon, the head of Terra Labs, wanted to be the single largest holder of Bitcoin in the world so that if UST failed, the Bitcoin market would crash massively and it would take the rest of the crypto markets with it. If you had a big position in Bitcoin, you would then have a vested interest in wanting UST not to fail. I think if we scale that to you know, $10 billion, so the reason why I want to get to $10 billion is that besides Satoshi, we will be the largest single holder of Bitcoin in the world. Now, then in that case, like within the crypto industry, then the failure of UST is equivalent to the failure of crypto itself, right? Uh, because if the largest single wallet like sells off all the Bitcoin, then that's an issue. Yikes. So at this point, I think we have a pretty good background on what is Luna and what is UST, the leveraged nature of Anchor and how Bitcoin is involved in this whole problem. Next, let's get into how this whole thing went south. Ultimately, this whole experiment was a bet by Luna of can we get to massive scale and achieve huge network effects before all of this leverage unwinds and a sophisticated market actor that's much bigger than us just wipes us completely out. Unfortunately, Fortunately, Luna was not able to achieve those network effects and the leverage unwind scenario played out and Luna token holders were the ones left holding the bag. Early last week, UST lost its peg, which obviously led to UST holders wanting to get out of UST. So they sold back into Luna and then some of them probably left the Luna ecosystem entirely and sold back into US dollars. And that started to crash the price of not only UST, but also of Luna. Terra Labs was forced to start selling their Bitcoin reserves to try to prop up the value of UST and by selling those those Bitcoin reserves, the Bitcoin price started falling. And when the price of Bitcoin falls, the price of everything else comes right down with it. In part because of the psychology of Bitcoin being the biggest coin in the space, and likely in part because of how much synthetic Bitcoin leverage exists within the DeFi ecosystem. As the UST price contracts, more Luna is created, and then everyone gets scared and mass leaves UST. There's basically a bank run on UST. Even more Luna gets created, which continues to drive down the price of Luna, which lowers confidence in UST, because at some point there won't be $1 of Luna to actually back all of the UST that's in circulation. So people switch into Luna, which means more Luna gets minted and the entire process just continues and spirals downward on itself. And here we are today, about a week later, Luna has fallen 99.999%. UST has still not recovered to $1 and Terra Labs has likely sold a large chunk of their Bitcoin reserves. This story is still evolving and we will likely eventually find out exactly how much of the Bitcoin reserves were sold and what, if anything, Terra Labs is going to do to try to compensate at least some of the investors. We'll also possibly find out what large market actor caused this leverage unwind to occur in the first place. There are a bunch of unconfirmed ideas out there about what market actor could have caused this, including everyone's favorite market villain, Citadel. I don't really put too much stock in these theories. They seem kind of out there to me. Maybe we'll eventually find out who profited from all of this, but maybe we won't. It's clear that many small market participants, like the guy that wrote the article down in the description, saw this coming and wrote about it extensively in the month leading up to the event. So people calling this a black swan 
swan really just don't understand what the definition of a black swan is. And if you do want to learn the definition of a black swan, I highly recommend that you read the book Black Swan by Nassim Taleb. It is one of my favorite books. And if you read anything written by Nassim Taleb, I think you're going to learn a lot. I'll leave a link to that book down in the description and also a link to Audible, where if you don't like reading and you'd rather listen to the book, you can actually get this book for free using the link down in the description. As for what the fallout from all of this is going to look like, maybe UST eventually regains its peg, maybe not. Regardless, I think people are not going to really trust algorithmic stablecoins anymore, as this unwinding to zero has become the norm for algorithmic stablecoins. Ironically, this event makes stablecoins like Tether and USDC that people like to FUD all the time look really great because their models are historically much less risky by comparison. I imagine that there's going to be a lot of scrutiny from financial regulators who will feel emboldened to take action against algorithmic stablecoins and maybe DeFi as a whole. Maybe that will finally settle this whole are these tokens unregistered securities thing. The more examples we get like this, the more I think the answer to that question becomes clearly yes. It's hard to imagine someone defending the decentralization of Luna, a protocol that froze itself and then issued a million times more coins to its circulating supply. Maybe Luna recovers and maybe buying it at 0.02 cents turns out to be a galaxy brain move and I just miss out on all these gains. But there are obviously tons of reasons why this is not a good idea, including the entire infinitely expanding supply of Luna thing. When it was previously trading at $100, Luna looked like a really smart buy at $10. And it looked like an even smarter buy at a dollar. And it looked like a really smart buy at a penny. And right now it looks like a really smart buy at 1 50th of a penny. But it can always go lower. And if it falls another 99% from here, it might look like a really smart buy again because of the unit bias that we associate with this token that used to be worth $100. And we don't understand that the supply of the token has been expanded a million X. Obviously not financial advice. And just to be totally clear, I have never bought, sold, or held any Luna token. And I don't plan to do so in the future. Lots of people new to crypto found out this week why Bitcoiners are so toxic when it comes to talking about centralized coins with infinitely expandable supplies. Hopefully none of you guys out there were affected too badly by this. And please don't invest more than you're willing to lose in any speculative altcoin or Bitcoin or really any investment. Watching my net worth plummet from the Bitcoin volatility over this last week has been very difficult. And I can't imagine what Luna holders and people who were wiped out by leverage over this last week are going through. Remember that no investment is more important than your life. And I think it's important for all of us to take lessons away from situations like this. It is very important to understand the underlying fundamentals of what you invest in so that you can be aware of the level of risk that you're taking when you make these investments and act accordingly. That being said, comment down below if you guys have any questions or any thoughts about what we talked about today. I do still respond to all the comments. Like the video if you learned something and come back here every Monday at 10 a.m. Eastern for a new video. I love you all. See you next week.